Welcome to the Kingdom Crossroads Podcast with Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Using an interview format, Pastor Bob will introduce you to men and women whose ministries are impacting this world with the gospel and will also provide commentary and insight on end-time prophetic events we now see happening in the news. Now here is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Hello everyone everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome back to another episode of the Kingdom Crossroads podcast. We're so blessed that you're joining us today. Now, as a pastor, ministry leader, or a business professional, especially an online business, you know how important digital marketing can be to your business. Even a traditional brick-and-mortar business has a presence on the web. And if you are on the web, if you have a church website, if your ministry has a blog or any digital footprint, you need to know all about search engine optimization or SEO. You need to understand how to market your ministry in this modern age. Your nonprofit organization, your business, all of it is dependent on what you do on the web just as much as it is in handing out business cards at meetings and things like that. Now, in order to do that, you should have a professional digital marketing company in order to do it effectively. You can do it on your own and learn from your own mistakes, or you could pass it off to someone in your church who may know slightly more about digital marketing than you do. Or you can hire a professional and save the cost, not just in dollars, but in time spent on things going well. And that's where my guest today, David Summerfleck, with Sudden Impact Digital Marketing can help. David is a professional at what he does. He has put together, along with his wife, a team of professionals that can handle just about any digital marketing scenario you can think of. David is the author of five books, a former college professor, the founder of two startups, an expert in digital marketing, SEO, website development, and social media marketing, as well as content marketing, Google AdWords, Facebook advertising, and even traditional advertising. He is also an active member of the Internet Society. I didn't even know there was an Internet Society, but (laughs) we'll have to talk more about that later. Uh, David is also a member of Webmasters Association. Wow. I mean, help me welcome to the program, David Summerflake. David, that is quite a list. I mean, do you ever sleep? Glory to God. Uh, yeah, I, I don't uh, I don't sleep enough, to be quite honest with you, but there's work to be done. Um, <laughs> and actually, the Internet Society is a real organization that actually oversees how the Internet as uh, an organization, basically, uh, how the Internet is run, who wow. can administer domain names, mm-hmm. uh, who can, you know, who are the major hosting companies. So it's kind of a company that oversees how the Internet as, you know, like an infrastructure to society, how that's administered and run. Um, so I am a member. I do get involved where I can. Um, and I'm proud to be a member. Uh, yeah, if something is of interest to me, then I like to be a member of the professional association. Yeah, so awesome. I've also been a member of the Society for Professional Journalists uh, when I was a reporter and you know other organizations. And I think that professional associations are important to show other business owners and other uh business professionals that you're serious about what you do yeah. uh, and, you know, and it matters to you. So that's why I list them. Amen. Well, David, I always start with this one question first and I ask it sure. across the board. And other than that short bio that I just read, tell us in your own words, who is David Summerfleck? Well, I, I appreciate it very much. Basically, uh, in, in a nutshell kind of summary, I'm a digital marketing consultant with about 20 years experience working for several different agencies uh, as an employee, as a contract uh, uh, administrator, project manager, overseeing operations. But I've also worked for many different types of agencies as a freelancer and a part-time employee when I was younger. So uh, without talking for, you know, multiple hours, <laughs> basically, uh, I have a degree in English with an emphasis in creative writing that I got from old dominion university in Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. While I was in college, I've always been a very active person because I know 
time here is limited. And so while I was a college student, I've always been very impassioned to do the things that I enjoy doing that I felt called to do. Um, so while I was a college student, I had internships to help me pay for college. I was a journalism scholarship uh, reporter for the college and faculty publications. Um, and then uh, for a local newspaper. Mm. When I graduated from college, I went and worked for uh, several publications and marketing agencies at one after the other. And I started to see a trend developing that more and more writers and journalists for publications, they were kind of being edged out. Mm. And the steady, secure job wasn't really there for a lot of them, unless you had a master's degree or more specific education. Yeah. So I started studying programming and web design technology and internet technology uh, while I was actually finishing up the degree. Okay. And, um, you know, and then uh, once I graduated from college, I started working for different uh, technology web development agencies. And, you know, I also got involved in mediation, which is basically resolving court right. disputes without lawyers. Yep. The lawyer could be there, but they're not, we're not fighting it out in court, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more informal, and the lawyer signs off on the agreement. So I started looking into mediation and studying that because it interested me. And uh, so I got involved with that for several years. I started a mediation nonprofit organization because, again, I felt really like I wanted to help people in need resolve their conflicts in a peaceable way that wouldn't bankrupt them. Right. And so my wife and I had that nonprofit for several years. It was very stressful, listing to all kinds of marital issues and disputes and child custody and landlord tenant and, and, and debt collection. And after a couple of years, my wife just said, look, this really isn't peaceful. It's, it's not what I want to hear today. It's not enjoyable. And quite honestly, it's not really worth it. Find something that you enjoy that's more creative and more fun for you that you can do 90%. Yeah. And then if I want to get involved every once in a while, I can help you out with the bookkeeping or whatever on the side. I said, you know what? You're right. Let me edge this out slowly <laughs> and take a break. I took a step back and I said, you know what? I've got a lot of experience with marketing. I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I was a volunteer certified business mentor for SCORE, which mm -hmm. is a yeah. of the small business administration. I volunteered for them for about five to six years off and on. Every time I volunteered, I'd be inundated with more phone calls than I could possibly handle. I couldn't even keep track of them and they couldn't keep track of them. And we were, it was just, you know, unbelievable. Uh, I talked to marketing agencies, marketing agency owners, but million dollar agencies uh, who were about to go under. They couldn't compete. They didn't know wow. what to do. So they would call and I'd consult with them. Now they have lawyers, electricians, uh, handymen, you know, church administrators, uh, you name it, lawyers, law firm administrators, uh, you know, calling me asking for marketing help mm -hmm. because a lot of members of school, and I'm not, I don't want to say anything negative about them, but a lot of the members are retired. Right. So I'm semi-retired. I'm not filthy rich, but I'm comfortable. Yeah. Um, but I love digital marketing. I love technology. I love the innovation and what it can do uh, for people in a short amount of time. Yeah. So I really got a lot of referrals coming in very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so like five months ago, I just said, look, guys, I'm going to take a step back mm. um, because... You know, honestly, I'm giving business advice to people, and I don't think they're really taking it seriously. They're not valuing it uh, because it's free. They're not really seeing the yeah. value in it. They're not listening yeah. to me. I don't want to give advice for free that people aren't listening to, for one, right. yeah. and it's taking them a, a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. It's, it's exhausting. So I took a step back and just said, let me be more particular and work with people who have a need, mm -hmm. hence a desire. 
Yeah. And I'll make my fees affordable so I can work with just about anybody, but it has to be enough that they're going to listen. Right, right. Well, let me and ask you value. This. So go ahead. Yeah. How is digital marketing different from what we commonly call traditional marketing? Thank you. Great question. Very important distinction. It's the tools. And it's really the gist of it. Digital marketing is no different than traditional marketing. It's just that we use different tools. And people get caught up on a lot of these terms and a lot of these tools without looking at the big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look at the, the miracles that Jesus performed. Or you can look at the message, which is, to me, much more right, important. Right, yeah. And you don't want to miss the forest for the trees. I want the message, you know. And, um, you know, there's, you hear people say internet marketing, digital marketing, SEO marketing, content mm -hmm. marketing, social media marketing. These are all tools. It doesn't matter what the tools are. And I had to learn because I would talk to potential clients and I would talk to them about the tools because they would say, I know what I want. I want this. I want this. I want, you know, I don't care about SEO. And then they would call me back six months later and say, well, why am I not number one in Google? Well, sir, you told me you didn't care about SEO. <laughs> How come nobody's finding me on the Facebook or the Twitter? Right. Well, ma'am, you told me you didn't care about that. You didn't want to budget for that. Oh, is that what it meant? So <laughs> I guess. I've had people tell me they didn't know what content marketing meant. Yeah. Or why do I have to have written material for the website? There's a So I started saying, look to the client, let's not focus uh, on the tools Let's focus on the business objective because that matters so much more. Yeah. And the reality is, in a lot of cases, clients may not think, what does it matter what my business goals are? I just need a website. But the fact of the matter is, if, you're ha if you have a business that you just opened, it, your goals are going to be very different mm -hmm. than if you want to sell a business. Right. If you're a realtor, your goals, whether they know it or not, are going to be radically different than if they have a restaurant or right. for that matter, a church is going to, mm -hmm. if you have a church, your goals are going to be very different than that of a lawyer's where mm -hmm. they should be anyway. So the, the, the client or business owner may not think that what they need or the goals are, are different or that a web developer needs to know. But honestly, if that person is professional and they care, which they should, right. they need to be informed. They need to ask you probing questions. Why are we doing this? Okay. Well, so, if, uh, yeah, to answer your question very directly, digital marketing is marketing only we're using modern, you know, digital tools like the internet and SEO and all of these other related tools. And it's, it's just a broad heading to mean that we can use anything digital or internet related to get you across that finish line. Okay. Well, let's dig down on that a little bit. Now in a normal traditional business, they have to get foot traffic. They have to get people coming into the store. How does the marketing aspect of that type of business differ from an online store. How do we get quote unquote foot traffic into our online store? Well, you know, the goal is not any different. If you have a physical restaurant, um, your goal, like you said, is foot traffic. You need uh, customers coming into that restaurant. So it's really no different at all. Uh, if we have an online website representing that restaurant or an e-commerce retailer, the goal is for people to visit that website. Now, if that website is tied into a physical location, then the goal becomes twofold. We want people to visit that company website or that online retailer, but also go to a physical location if there is one. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Now, if I were coming to you, we just mentioned a church a second ago. If I were coming to you, say, in behalf of a church, uh, sure. Let's say, you know, what what questions would you ask to see what I needed in the way of your services? I, you know, to be quite honest with you, I would want. I'm kind of a believer in what's called the multiple interaction model, 
where, and I've heard this from other people, and that's how I learned about it, but it's basically a fancy term for having conversations. Okay. So basically what that means, I would want to talk to you at least two or three times. Uh, we could, you know, the first time we should meet in person, if that's possible. And we would just have one or two conversations to get to know each other, learn what your goals are, what your objectives are, what is a realistic budget range for you to achieve what you say your stated objectives are. Then we would kind of work from that. But when you talk about a church, a church is a very particular type of business entity because community is so important to the church's foundation. It's without community and outreach, then the church's functionings are going to be very limited. Okay. Well, let's it's say, like, you know, a like person with no legs. Right. Okay. Now, if I were to, and th- I see this so often, so I'm just going to ask it in this, this way. If I were to build a website as a church, if I were to build a website, uh, make a blog out of it, and put my weekly sermon on the blog, and that's it, will Google find me? And will Google promote nope. my website? No. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you the short answer. I'm not trying to be yeah. uh, coy or flip about it, but this is extremely common. Yep. This uh, so you, you find that all the time. That's what they do. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for saying it, yep. because uh, there are occasions when I am not necessarily inspired. And I will be a little bit grouchy. I might come across as being a little bit crabby with people because this is so common. Yeah. You wouldn't go, you would not go to a dentist, you know, and, 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 and try to do your own root canal. You'd go to the dentist. You wouldn't go to a, you know, I don't, there's a million analogies to this, mm-hmm. but the bottom line is if you want something done correctly and thoroughly, then you work with a professional to get it done right the first time. So it it, it, it irritates me a little bit. Did you see Wix and Weebly and Squarespace? Mm -hmm. And they all advertise on television and online very heavily, which is their legal right to do. It's not that they're bad companies or bad people, but they represent that anybody can do this and that you can, basically get this website for free you have to ask yourself why would they give you something for free if it were truly so great and profitable for you obviously there are other attendant fees there are other processes involved that are much more deep that are more involved so the reality is that 99.9 percent of all businesses and this includes churches uh go under within their first couple of years. This is not my opinion. This is from the Small Business Administration of the United States, SBA.gov. Anybody can look this up. The reason for this is that they don't know what they don't know. They're making mistakes, and these are very common mistakes. But the reality is that they make mistakes, and, you know, you basically have to work with a professional to get it done correctly the first time. Okay. Now, explain the major difference, other than cost, that an organization be looking at between free traffic and paid traffic. Cost for traffic. Other than the cost, well, I mean, you get, you know, how can we get free traffic and paid traffic without? The, I know you got to pay for, you know, you pay for what you get. Free is free, paid is paid. But what, you know, when they do paid traffic versus just, you know, trying to get free traffic, sure. what's the difference? Sure. Paid traffic is also called PPC, pay-per-click. Basically, that's where you work with Google, okay, the number one search engine on the planet Earth. There is Bing, there is Yahoo, but something, I think like 3% of the population uses Bing, and something like 1% or 2%, I don't remember, uses Yahoo. Um, So Google owns the lion's share, at least 95% of all online search. So why not work with them? Yeah. That's Google AdWords. You get on the phone, you hire somebody who works with Google Ads. I call them directly and work with them. Depending on your terms and your type of business and your market, you would usually pay a daily fee to work with them. And the way it works is with Google AdWords, their representative, 
We'll work with the web developer to make sure that your website is slowly changed and tinkered with so that it can accommodate Google's search engine and how they work so that it looks perfectly on mobile. It loads very quickly. It has the green lock for SSL, that everything is streamlined in accordance to Google's specifications. And the more you do that and you work with them, slowly it'll start to tick up in the ratings. Now, moving up in ratings by itself is called, called organic search. Working with someone from Google itself is pay-per-click or just working with someone, someone at Google AdWords. Usually 20 to $30 a day for about a 90-day period will move you up. In some cases, it's shorter. In some cases, it varies depending on the business type and the market that they're in and how competitive it is. So that's why they can't tell you, sir or madam, it's going to be X now because they need to get to know all of your, your, your specifications. And even Google will tell you, we don't know how many people are going to click on your ad. Yeah. Okay. So, but they can give you a range. So typically working with Google is going to be 20 to $30 a day for about a 90 day period of time. But again, for the business, is it worth it for them? Right. That's the big question. Are they, do they see the value in being number one at the top of Google search results? Some business owners don't. They, so, you know, if you have a mom and pop uh, restaurant and they get more people coming in and they don't know how to monitor that or mm -hmm. see the result, or they're just not willing to invest in it or they don't believe it or they think it's a fad or whatever, whatever the case may be, that's the thing where sometimes people will get stuck up in that yeah. or think anyone can do this or I can study it in my spare time. <laughs> you can study it in your spare time. Of course you can, but it's going to take X number of hours yeah. per day for X number of months. And there's a lot that goes into it. You can know SEO and study it for hours per day for a month or two and now feel very informed. But now you're going to have to learn web design in right. order to implement it. You're going to have to be familiar with at least some programming to implement it. Yeah. So you see how one feeds the other. Right. Okay. So you've told us what marketing is, at least I think. <laughs> Can you tell us what marketing is not? Um, it's not. It's not voodoo. It's not telepathy. It's not magical. You know, at the end of the day, it's about building relationships and building conversations. And, you know, a lot of people will post things on social media and, well, how come I'm not getting any hits? How come nobody's visiting my store or my restaurant right. or, right. or my, how come I'm not getting more parishioners to my church? I'm posting, yep. you know, good things on social media. It's not about doing that any more than it is, you know, putting flyers on people's cars. Mm -hmm. That's very hit or miss. You may get something, you may not but it's about stimulating conversation and building interest, trying to get a conversation going. You know, we can help with X, Y, and Z. Would you like to schedule a call? Would you like to come by our church? We're having this great meeting tonight and it's linked up to our LinkedIn profile. It's connected to our Facebook. It's connected to our meetup group and all these event calendars in the local news and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So now it has a greater reach. That's what this is all about. Yeah. It's about connecting things and building conversations. Hey, folks, Pastor Bob here. Unfortunately, we are all out of time for today's episode, but come back because for the next two days, we're going to be interviewing David Summerfleck on this subject of uh, marketing, internet marketing, uh, social media marketing, all the different facets of marketing your business in today's world. You know, digital marketing really is something similar to what radio and television were a generation ago or newspaper or magazine ads two generations ago. Yeah, there's still some of it around, but it's very expensive to do. Where digital marketing, although there may be an initial investment, your ability to reach so many people uh, just from your desktop, just through your cell phone, just through your, your uh, internet connective devices, it's amazing 
when you look at the results that someone who knows what they're doing, someone like David Summerfleck and his uh, business, when they know what they are doing with internet marketing, SEO, and all these other things in the modern age, they have the ability to get you clients that you would never, ever be able to find on your own. But you need to be able to trust them. And it's just not David. I'm just not putting in a plug for his company, although you know, I'm sure that would be very appreciative. You need to find someone you trust. And David is just sharing with us today some of the things you need to look for. He's going to be sharing, uh, especially for our nonprofit, our ministry friends, uh, you need to pay special attention to tomorrow's broadcast because I'm going to start uh, right in that area of the interview with that question in mind. And he has a great answer for you. So join us tomorrow. Uh, be sure to pass this along to your friends who are also in business. Uh, you know, I, I was mentioning digital marketing, but it doesn't matter if you have a traditional brick and mortar type of business you still need to get clients and you need to get your name in front of clients and you need to find them so they can find you uh, most people will just use their cell phone and, and look up places to go visit i know i've done it when i've been visiting towns what's a good restaurant near me and that's where i would go so you need to be online with everything you do so come back join us tomorrow because the next tomorrow and the next day are going to be great. I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss it. Share it with your friends, tell them to listen, and be blessed in all that you do. Welcome to the Kingdom Crossroads Podcast with Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Using an interview format, Pastor Bob will introduce you to men and women whose ministries are impacting this world with the gospel and will also provide commentary and insight on end-time prophetic events we now see happening in the news. Now here is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. podcast for today. We are in part two of a three-part interview with David Summerflick. David is a professional when it comes to internet marketing, SEO marketing, and especially uh, nonprofit marketing, especially in this modern age, this digital age. And we started yesterday. If you missed any of yesterday's episode, we're not going to be able to recap much. So I need you to go back and listen to uh, episode 349 and you need to catch up and then come back and listen to this one uh, because we're covering some new material today. Praise the Lord. Now, David, as I said, is an internet marketing specialist and, you know, he has digital marketing as, I mean, he, he eats, lives and breathes this stuff, folks. And he knows all about the Google AdWords, the website development, the social media marketing, content marketing, Facebook advertising. He is even a member of the Internet Society. Praise the Lord. I didn't even know there was an Internet Society, but they are the ones who are responsible for who runs and operates the Internet. They were in the news a few years ago. Uh, David is a member of that society. That's how involved he is in all of this. Okay, so let's jump right back into the interview with David Summerflick. Now, if I were to, and this, I see this so often, so I'm just going to ask it in this this way: If I were to build a website as a church, if I were to build a website, uh, make a blog out of it, and put my weekly sermon on the blog, and that's it, will Google find me, and will Google promote no. my website? No, <laughs> and I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you the short answer. I'm not trying to be uh, coy or flip about it, but this is extremely common. Yep. This happens. Say, you, you find that all the time. That's what they do. Yes. Thank you for saying it, yep. because uh, there are occasions when I am not necessarily inspired, and I would be a little bit grouchy. I might come across as being a little bit crabby with people because this is so common yeah. you wouldn't go you would not go to a dentist you know and, 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 and try to do your own root canal you'd go to the dentist you wouldn't go to a, you know i don't there's a million analogies to this mm -hmm. but the bottom line is if you want something done correctly 
and thoroughly, then you work with a professional to get it done right the first time. Yeah. So it, 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 it irritates me a little bit that you see Wix and Weebly and Squarespace, mm. and they all advertise on television and online very heavily, which is their legal right to do. It's not that they're bad companies or bad people, but they represent that anybody can do this and that you can basically get this website for free. You have to ask yourself, why would they give you something for free if it were truly so great and profitable for you? Obviously, there are other attendant fees. There are other processes involved that are much more deep, that are more involved. So the reality is that 99.9% of all businesses, and this includes churches, uh, go under within their first couple of years. Yeah. This is not my opinion. This is from the Small Business Administration of the United States, SBA.gov. Anybody can look this up. The reason for this is that they don't know what they don't know. They're yeah. making mistakes, and these are very common mistakes. But the reality is that they make mistakes and you know, you basically have to work with a professional to get it done correctly the first time. Okay. Now, explain the major difference, other than cost, that an organization be looking at between free traffic and paid traffic. Cost for traffic. Other than the cost, well, I mean, you get, you know, how can we get free traffic or paid traffic without? I know you got to pay for, you know, you pay for what you get. Free is free, paid is paid. But what, you know, when they do paid traffic versus just, you know, trying to get free traffic, what's the difference? Sure. Paid traffic is also called PPC, pay-per-click. Basically, that's where you work with Google, okay, the number one search engine on the planet Earth. There is Bing, there is Yahoo. But something, I think like 3% of the population uses Bing and something like 1% or 2%, I don't remember, uses Yahoo. Um, so Google owns the lion's share, at least 95% of all online search. So why not work with them? Yeah. That's Google AdWords. You get on the phone, you hire somebody who works with Google Ads. I call them directly and work with them. Depending on your terms and your type of business and your market, you would usually pay a daily fee to work with them. And the way it works is with Google AdWords, their representative will work with the web developer to make sure that your website is slowly changed and tinkered with so that it can accommodate Google's search engine and how they work so that it looks perfectly on mobile, it loads very quickly, it has the green lock for SSL, that everything is streamlined in accordance to Google specifications. And the more you do that and you work with them, slowly it'll start to tick up in the ratings. Now, moving up in ratings by itself is called, called organic search. Working with someone from Google itself is pay-per-click, or just working with someone, someone at Google AdWords, usually 20 to $30 a day for about a 90 day period will move you up. In some cases it's shorter, in some cases it varies depending on the business type and the market that they're in and how competitive it is. So that's why they can't tell you, sir or madam, it's going to be X now because they need to get to know all of your, your, your specifications. And even Google will tell you, we don't know how many people are going to click on your ad. Yeah. Okay. So, but they can give you a range. So typically working with Google is going to be 20 to $30 a day for about a 90 day period of time. But again, for the business, is it worth it for them? Right. That's the big question. Are they, do they see the value in being number one at the top of Google search results. Some business owners don't. They, so, you know, if you have a mom and pop uh, restaurant and they get more people coming in and they don't know how to monitor that or mm -hmm. see the result, or they're just not willing to invest in it or they don't believe it or they think it's a fad or whatever, whatever the case may be, 
that's the thing where sometimes people will get stuck up in that yeah. or think anyone can do this or I can study it in my spare time. <laughs> you can study it in your spare time. Of course you can, but it's going to take X number of hours yeah. per day for X number of months. And there's a lot that goes into it. You can know SEO and study it for hours per day for a month or two and now feel very informed. But now you're going to have to learn web design in order to implement it. You're going to have to be familiar with at least some programming to implement it. So you see how one feeds the other. Right. Okay. So you've told us what marketing is, at least I think. <laughs> Can you tell us what marketing is not? Um, it's not It's not voodoo. It's not telepathy. It's not magical. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's about building relationships and building conversations and, you know, a lot of people will post things on social media and, well, how come I'm not getting any hits? How come nobody's visiting my store or my restaurant right. or, right. or my, how come I'm not getting more parishioners to my church? I'm posting, yep. you know, good things on social media. It's not about doing that any more than it is, you know, putting flyers on people's cars. Mm -hmm. That's very hit or miss. You may get something, you may not. But it's about stimulating conversation and building interest, trying to get a conversation going. You know, we can help with X, Y, and Z. Would you like to schedule a call? Would you like to come by our church? We're having this great meeting tonight, and it's linked up to our LinkedIn profile. It's connected to our Facebook. It's connected to our meetup group and all these event calendars in the local news and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So now it has a greater reach. That's what this is all about. Yeah, it's about connecting things and building conversations. Okay, now I know many smaller churches are on a very tight budget. It shouldn't be that way, but that is the day and time we're living in. But how can a church or smaller ministry use your services on a limited budget? Well, that's easy. Well, you know, a limited budget is still a budget. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you don't have money. Uh, the, you know, the, the economy has been difficult for a long time. And uh, you know, I think it's a matter of valuing the desired outcome sufficiently that you're willing to invest in it. If you're at church, um, you know, I, like I, we were saying before we started the podcast, I've volunteered to help churches in the past and told them, I could create a beautiful thing for you. I could create a forum. I could make it so people could post classified ads and you can take your, your sermons and turn them into uh, an MP3s and podcasts and all of this. Mm -hmm. All I ask yep. is that you, you let me do it my way and give me a great referral and, and just vouch for me and let me do this for you. And if there are attendant fees, you cover the hosting and, you mm -hmm. know, the fees. So I'm not paying for all of this out of pocket expenses. Right. And let me, let me do what I can do for you and trust the process that I've learned over decades of experience. I've offered to do that in the past, mm -hmm. but then the, the person would come back and say, well, no, it, it must look like this. And you must use these colors and you must use pictures of these ducks or whatever, because I like ducks. And <laughs> I've actually had that happen. Really? Um, oh, yeah. I've offered to, I, I like animals and I'm very partial to social causes. And I volunteered to help social causes in the past. And I've actually gone to great lengths to work with them. But then they would tell me this board member likes this color. So we have to change everything to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, look, look. There's a science behind this. There's a science that I can explain to you why, you know, the science behind color psychology, yeah. SEO, and design standards, and so on. And I'm offering to do this for you for free. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know what? This just isn't a love connection. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. So I've had that happen more often than not. Wow. So, again, it's a matter of valuing the outcome instead of fixating on little pieces of the puzzle or little tools or bright, shiny objects, like I call them. So, um, you know, I'm not going to work for free because I just found that this will happen all the time. They don't value it. Yeah. So if there's a church with a low budget, hey, I understand everybody's got a budget. There's always a way to work within that budget. If it's $50 
for the next X number of years mm -hmm. or what have you. There's a way to work that out. Okay. Uh, how do you calculate the return on investment uh, for a nonprofit that would con be considering using your service? How, how do you go about calculating that? Yeah, good question. The return on investment for the client or the business owner or even the church, for the church administrator, we talk about churches. A church can grow exponentially so that the more exposure they have to their community and the more involvement they have with their local community, the more they can grow. So that really is an issue of working hand in glove with their marketing uh, person so that they can grow. I've, I've never seen a church in my life that could not grow rapidly if they would just do some basic things, put signage out in front of the church, uh, you know, have a website that works on modern, modern phones, you know, have downloadable sermons that people can listen to, yeah. you know, involve the community online, have a forum, have a support forum for people in need. Uh, there's so many different things that you could offer and tie into that website, but I can't make them do it. They have to have a will, yep. you know, you. but that's, that's how you can grow exponentially. You know, I've never had a client that if they're willing to meet me halfway that I couldn't work with, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm not going to, you know, go well far and beyond and create an in-depth marketing plan mm -hmm. with multiple strategy, uh, tiers or levels yeah, of support later, yeah. and then you know we're going to be changing our mind every 10 minutes and i don't really care about the outcome my budget is ten dollars and so on <laughs> that's just not that's not realistic Amen. it's a fallacy that non nonprofits must subscribe to this poverty mentality yeah, it is. kaiser Kaiser Permanente is a nonprofit organization, and believe me, they're not hurting for money at all. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit is structured differently than a for-profit business, in that the money made goes back into that organization. But Amazon does that the same way. Yep. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's I, I've said that before, and uh, talking to several people, that a nonprofit does mean does not mean you can't make a profit. It's just that the profit is not distributed to shareholders. The profit is That's right. in the business, which allows Absolutely. you to grow bigger and then impact more people. You know. That's right. So, yeah. And for a church, isn't that what it's all about? I mean, if yeah. you look at Amazon, uh, if you look at Amazon's financial records, they haven't turned a profit yet. Mm. Wow, I didn't know that. This, yeah. this is the truth, yeah. because Jeffrey Bezos takes every penny that he makes and he reinvests it into Amazon's infrastructure, which is why they have grown so rapidly, you know, so much in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Every time he gets a couple million more, he, he builds out another distribution warehouse or he mm -hmm. puts out a different type of Kindle or another service or whatever. And that's why nobody can compete with them. He's mm -hmm. innovating. Amen. But he's also reinvesting every penny back into their infrastructure. Walmart isn't doing that. Mm -hmm. They could compete, but yeah. they don't scale the same way. If a church could do the same thing, reinvest, reinvest what you make into your infrastructure, oh, my goodness. I mean, you can imagine how quickly you could grow. Uh -huh. uh, I've heard about oh, – no, I've, I've studied a little bit and heard about crowdfunding as a yeah. – you know, using that as a source of revenue that could – purchase your services on uh, on like an advanced level. Uh, is crowdfunding even considered as good marketing these days? Well, they're two different things, basically. Crowdfunding is basically you would go to a website, like uh, there's one called Indiegogo, mm -hmm. the silly name, but it's very serious. The same thing with Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It might sound silly, you know, like a bicycle or whatever, but it's very, very serious. You basically go into this website and you say, this is my idea or my business proposition or whatever, and I want to raise money for it. And you, they will walk you through the process of the rules and regulations and terms, and you, can, you must work within that. And you have to raise a specific amount by a specific time. If you do, you can keep a certain amount. But you can't go into these situations, you know, thinking things are magical or something because all you need is one one letter from the IRS and everything changes very quickly. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, 
you know, we've been audited by the IRS and it's not, a, uh, you know, you're not slapping your knee, mm -hmm. you know, you have to get your, your, your ducks in order pretty quickly and they will look at every little thing. Yeah, so, um, you know, so you can use crowdsourcing, crowdfunding is basically using these websites to get, to try to pick up money on a certain percentage in order for a certain percentage in order to, for them to get a certain percentage of your business's future earnings or something like that, where you negotiate and it varies from website to website, from service to service, you know, and that's when you see these things online and you'll see things that in local cities, uh, where they have like their version of shark tank at some community yeah, college sure. or whatever. And basically what these are, are local investors or local dentists or doctors or people who are doing well financially you will say, look, I'll put some money into your business. If I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. and I'm going to want X amount in return, I'm going to charge, or I'm just going to give you a loan with high interest rates. Right. That's all. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a, there's something attached to it. You know, if they're going to give you money, they're going to want some things back in return yeah. naturally. Right. Yep. So, in the cases of a lot of things, they put certain constraints on you with certain rules and boundaries and limitations that they're going to get back enough that they make a profit. Yeah. So, um, That's is like an idea. Well, yeah. Right. I call them little devils because <laughs> they take, you know, I don't think they're angels at all. Yeah. They take a certain percentage along with you. And the majority of angel investors are not like what you see on Shark Tank, which right. even Shark Tank, what you see on TV is not what really happens. Yeah. You know, if you read articles about the program and by people who have been on the program, they'll tell you, Mark Cuban doesn't have the time to come and shake your hand and come meet you at your office and talk to you about what you really want to do with your business and meet with you every day. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a thousand other businesses in his portfolio to manage. Right. So you're going to be dealing with one of his employees or one of his subsidiaries or whatever. You know, th these are not, uh, you know, immediate solutions. And we live in a society right now that values that sense of immediacy that, you know, a lot you hear it's about millennials, you know, that, you know, we want something immediate and they expect it. Um, you know, when I work for a lot of agencies, I expect, you know, expected people to get things done by a deadline. You know, right. we had five, we had daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly deadlines where people had to perform, but, that's very different from the mentality of, you know, things are just happening and no business grows overnight. No website is going to get on the internet and be number one in Google, you know, right away. It happens in some cases, but with most, it doesn't. Um, if you're in a small town for a very niche market and there's nobody else in your zip code, uh, competing for these terms, it's possible. Yeah. But if you're in a larger metropolitan city and you're competing in a, in, in, in a high volume market, it could take 90 days. It could take longer mm -hmm. to slowly tick up and start seeing return on investment. Okay. So what is return on investment? ROI. It basically means their phone is ringing. You're getting emails every 20 minutes or so from new people who want to work with you. Yep. So, if, I, if we take the example of a local handyman, okay, I did a, a website a couple of years ago. I worked with a local handyman, very nice gentleman. Uh, I created an online presence for him. He was working part-time at a Home Depot. His dream was to be a handyman doing uh, kitchen makeovers, basement remodels, things of that nature. So I said to him, if you get one client, what is that client worth to you? Well, I don't know, Dave, maybe between 10 grand and 30 grand, depending on what they want done. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, you know, doing your, redoing your kitchen or redoing a basement could be 10 grand, could be 30. It depends on what they want. That makes sense. So if I can get you one guaranteed, guaranteed without any doubt, I know I can get you one new pre-qualified lead per month. That could be worth 10 grand. It'd be worth 30 grand over the course of a year. You're guaranteed you're going to get one per month. That's 12. 
okay, so if I'm guaranteeing you one new lead per month over the course of a year, and you've already told me that it, at the very lowest, it's mm-hmm. worth ten grand. At the highest, thirty grand. Let's negotiate. Mm-hmm. Give me ten percent of that annual take. So that will be my fee. Now, in return, I guarantee at the very least you'll get one new lead per month, probably more than that. Mm-hmm. So that's what we agreed upon. As soon as his site went live, there were no other handymen in his city in that zip code who were actively engaging in SEO. He immediately, like within two weeks, the site rocketed right up to the top of number one in Google. Wow. Like within two weeks, he's getting phone calls from people who want to work with him. He told me he wasn't prepared for it. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> I said, look, in all honesty, I could love you and bless you, but it's not my fault, is it? You knew you were working with a professional. I told you this was going to happen. I recommended that you get a toll-free number, that yeah. you be available when these people call. So anyway, long story short, he started getting phone calls immediately. Within that first month, he must have gotten at least 10 phone calls or emails from people who wanted to work with him right away. Wow. He more than made he more than made back mm-hmm. what he paid me yeah. within those those first 30 days. Amen. Hey folks, Pastor Bob here. Uh, we are all out of time for today's episode. <sighs> time just flies when we're doing these interviews, I'm telling you. Now, We've been interviewing David Summerfleck. This is part two of a three-part interview. We'll be wrapping it up tomorrow. So you need to come back tomorrow for episode number 351. Welcome to the Kingdom Crossroads Podcast with Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Using an interview format, Pastor Bob will introduce you to men and women whose ministries are impacting this world with the gospel and will also provide commentary and insight on end-time prophetic events we now see happening in the news. Now here is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Hello everyone everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome back to the Kingdom Crossroads Podcast. This We are wrapping up day three of a special interview with David Summerfleck, who's discussing nonprofit marketing in this modern age. And today, pastors, this is your day. We are exclusively, uh, almost exclusively, going to be talking about nonprofit marketing. Uh, That's including churches and other nonprofits. Uh, We're going to look at some sources of uh, funding, including crowdfunding, uh, some information you need to understand what your return on your investment should be when you do uh, online marketing and SEO marketing and things like that. Questions that you need to ask whoever it is you are having handle your SEO materials. Uh, Now, you can use David. You can contact him at his website and the information we've given at the end of the interview. Right now, we're jumping right back into the interview with David Summerfleck. Now, I've heard about, I don't know, I've, I've studied a little bit and heard about crowdfunding as a yeah. you know, using that as a source of revenue that could purchase your services on uh, on like an advanced level uh, is crowdfunding even considered as good marketing these days well there're two different things basically crowdfunding is basically you would go to a website like uh, there's one called india go go mm-hmm. the silly name but it's very serious the same thing with kickstarter that mm-hmm. might sounds silly, you know, like a bicycle or whatever, but it's very, very serious. You basically go into this website and you say, this is my idea or my business proposition or whatever, and I want to raise money for it. And you, they will walk you through the process of the rules and regulations and terms, and you, can, you must work within that. And you have to raise a specific amount by a specific time. If you do, you can keep a certain amount. But you can't go into these situations, you know, thinking things are magical or something because all you need is one one letter from the IRS and everything changes very quickly. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, uh, you know we've been audited by the IRS and it's not, a, uh, you know, you're not slapping your knee, mm-hmm. you know. 
you have to get your, your, your ducks in order pretty quickly and they will look at every little thing. Yeah, so, um, you know, so you can use crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding is basically using these websites to get, to try to pick up money on a certain percentage in order for a certain per, in order to, for them to get a certain percentage of your business's future earnings or something like that, where you negotiate and it varies from website to website, from service to service, you know, and that's when you see these things online and you'll see things that in local cities, uh, where they have like their version of shark tank at some community yeah. college or whatever. And basically what these are, are local investors or local dentists or doctors or people who are doing well financially who will say, look, I'll, put some money into your business if I think it's a good idea mm -hmm. and I'm going to want X amount in return. I'm going to charge, or I'm just going to give you a loan with high interest rates. Right. That's all. Yep. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a, there's something attached to it. You know, if they're going to give you money, they're going to want some things back in return yeah. naturally. Right. Yep. So in the cases of a lot of things, they put certain constraints on you with certain rules and boundaries and limitations that they're going to get back enough that they make a profit. Yeah. yeah. So, um, That's is like an ideal yeah. Right. I call them little devils because <laughs> they take, you know, I don't think they're angels at all. Yeah. They take a certain percentage along with you. And the majority of angel investors are not like what you see on Shark Tank, which right. even Shark Tank, what you see on TV is not what really happens. Yeah. You know, if you read articles about the program and by people who have been on the program, they'll tell you, Mark Cuban doesn't have the time to come and shake your hand and come meet you at your office and talk to you about what you really want to do with your business and meet with you every day. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a thousand other businesses in his portfolio to manage. Right. So you're going to be dealing with one of his employees or one of his subsidiaries or whatever. You know, th these are not, uh, you know, immediate solutions. And we live in a society right now that values that sense of immediacy that, you know, a lot you hear it's about millennials, you know, that, you know, we want something immediate and they expect it. Um, you know, when I work for a lot of agencies, I expect, you know, expected people to get things done by a deadline. You know, right. we had five, we had daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly deadlines where people had to perform, but, that's very different from the mentality of, you know, things are just happening and no business grows overnight. No website is going to get on the internet and be number one in Google, you know, right away. It happens in some cases, but with most, it doesn't. Um, if you're in a small town for a very niche market and there's nobody else in your zip code, uh, competing for these terms, it's possible. Yeah. But yeah. if you're in a larger metropolitan city and you're competing in a, in, in, in a high volume market, it could take 90 days. It could take longer mm -hmm. to slowly tick up and start seeing return on investment. Okay. So what is return on investment? ROI. It basically means your phone is ringing. You're getting emails every 20 minutes or so from new people who want to work with you. Yeah. So, if, I, if we take the example of a local handyman, okay, I did a, a website a couple of years ago. I worked with a local handyman, very nice gentleman. Uh, I created an online presence for him. He was working part-time at a Home Depot. His dream was to be a handyman doing uh, kitchen makeovers, basement remodels, things of that nature. So I said to him, if you get one client, what is that client worth to you? Well, I don't know, Dave, maybe between 10 grand and 30 grand, depending on what they want done. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, you know, doing your, redoing your kitchen or redoing a basement could be 10 grand, could be 30. It depends on what they want. That makes sense. So if I can get you one guaranteed, guaranteed without any doubt, I know I can get you one new pre-qualified lead per month. That could be worth 10 grand, could be worth 30 grand. Over the course of a year, you're guaranteed you're going to get one per month. That's 12. Okay, so if I'm guaranteeing you one new lead per month over the course of a year, and you've already told me that at the very lowest, 
that's mm-hmm. worth ten grand. At the highest thirty grand, let's negotiate. Mm-hmm. Give me ten percent of that annual take. So that will be my fee. Now, in return, I guarantee at the very least, you'll get one new lead per month, probably more than that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we agreed upon. As soon as his site went live, there were no other handymen in his city, in that zip code, who were actively engaging in SEO. Mm -hmm. He immediately, like within two weeks, the site rocketed right up to the top of number one in Google. Wow. Like within two weeks, he's getting phone calls from people who want to work with him. He told me he wasn't prepared for it. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> I said, look, in all honesty, I could love you and bless you, but it's not my fault, is it? You knew you were working with a professional. I told you this was going to happen. I recommended that you get a toll-free number, that yeah. you be available when these people call. So anyway, long story short, he started getting phone calls immediately. Within that first month, he must have gotten at least 10 phone calls or emails from people who wanted to work with him right away. Wow. He more than made he more than made back mm-hmm. what he paid me yeah. within those those first 30 days. Amen. Amen. Now, I know some pastors who have to work a second job, sometimes, you know, a third job in order to, yeah. you know, keep everything going both, you know, as a ministry and at home. How can a person like that find the funds to hire you? You know, again, there's no, there is no web developer out there or digital marketing agency owner who has a family-based agency who isn't going to work with you if you're willing to meet that person halfway and say, look, mm-hmm. you know, we had a budget range and we understand that this is a process and a service and not a physical item. So we're willing to pay a hundred a month or or whatever Mm -hmm. for X number of months until we meet, you know, something we're willing to negotiate with you in order to achieve these objectives. I I can't say what a specific amount would be without knowing, you know, people, people's desired outcomes of what they want to see. And and actually, the the bigger their goal, the happier I am for them because it gives us a dream to fulfill. Mm -hmm. It gives real goals to shoot for. But whatever the goal is, if it's to be Joel Osteen, that's great. (laughs) More power to them. If you want to build a ministry like Joyce Meyer, I think that's wonderful. Let's go build it. But be realistic and say, look, I'm going to have to get on a payment plan with you and we'll pay $200 a month for the next several years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or we can work something out. We'll give you a percentage or we'll give you a seat on the board of directors or we'll work something out somewhere other that is negotiable. We'll work something out. There's always a means to an end. There's always a way to reach your destination if you're flexible and willing. Um, I forget where it's from. Is it Ephesians where he said, if the people have no vision, they shall perish or where they have no vision. Mm-hmm. Yep. With, uh, with no vision, the people will perish. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer in that. If someone is willing to work with me in a realistic manner, I'm willing to work with them and whatever their goals may be, the bigger and loftier, uh, I think that's wonderful. The most saddening thing to me in the world is when people say that they have a business or a nonprofit or a church, but then they'll say, but I don't want SEO and I don't want this. I don't want to pay for that. And right. I'm trying for, you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul or, or cut this to cut that. No, have ambitions, have goals. And we'll figure out a way to get it done. If you're realistic and, and you're willing to budget and work something out with me, we'll get a monthly plan going. Okay. And if a nonprofit uses your services and a st- you know, to establish a presence on the web and, and uses your services to help increase, you know, the, the, the objective is to increase the revenue, of course. Uh, would they oh, have yeah. to sell books or CDs? Or, do, I mean, do people even use CDs anymore? I don't, I don't you know. Sure they do. Sure they do. I, I have a CD player in my car. I might listen to my phone, but I still use the CD player. Mm-hmm. The, here's the thing. When you're talking about a church, you're talking about an enormous shopping mall, basically, 
with a head person in charge. The business of the shopping mall is to make money, and they don't really care about you as a person. The church, to me, is the same in so far as, but the difference is there is a central person in charge of that church, and in addition to selling and ministering, making money and profiting and putting it back into that, the goal is to service the community and also serve serve the community, help build the community, and help individuals and try to minister to people's souls and really help people genuinely, profoundly in need. There are a lot of people out there really seriously hurting, and it's the goal of the church, or should be, to help people who are hurting in society, to bring them in, minister to them, in my opinion, without judgment, and help heal heal people and minister to the community and build the community up a part of that community. So if the church needs to sell CDs of sermons to make money support the church, I see nothing wrong with that. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. If the church wants to sell books in the church bookstore, sell them. Amen. You know, it's no different than passing around the collection plate. Um, you know, if you have a nonprofit organization that helps a, a, a battered women, that's yeah. a beautiful, wonderful cause. You got to charge money because you're going to need money to pay for services. Yeah, that's true. You know, amen. Uh, the rest of the world still needs money, and they, you know, we still have bills to pay. So you raise funds to do it. Uh, again, Kaiser Permanente doesn't give you your health care for free, <laughs> and they. They don't seem to discount their services. I could be wrong. Um, you know, Kaiser Permanente, please don't don't sue me. But, <laughs> you know, I know that they charge for their services, whether or not they're discounted. You know, I'll leave that to them to, yeah. to explain that, you know, nonprofits need to make money. Churches need to make money to pay, pay the electric bill and to advertise and to grow. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's how churches grow. Okay. You know, and. Um, but there's no web developer, there's no digital marketer out there, especially a family-run agency that isn't going to work with people if they're reasonable and yeah. say, let's get a monthly plan. I'd love that. Yeah. If, a, if a church contacted me and wanted me to build their church up online so that it was the biggest and brightest church online in their community, and, you know, hey, we, we will work out something monthly and we'll let you do what you need to do explain the science to us and we'll we'll let you do your job who wouldn't love that amen now could a pastor could a pastor use your services if he wanted to branch out into public speaking maybe inside other churches or or launch an entirely new branch of ministry you know speaking at business conferences or whatever can they use your services as well uh to do that or would that be Digital marketing is still marketing. Okay. So, you know, for example, let's, you know, we could take a pastor, Pastor Charles, just for the sake of an example. Uh, you know, Pastor Charles uh, could lead a church and say, well, I also want to be a public speaker mm-hmm. uh, at local organizations. Uh, could Could that pastor... Uh, have the church website that's bringing in leads and and new parishioners on a daily basis and use digital marketing, of course. Could the same person have a separate website for his uh, speaking services? Of course. Why not? You know, there's no reason not to. At the end of the day, digital marketing, internet marketing, whatever term you use, the purpose is to, to build up. The Amen. business and support the church. It's the tools that we use. It doesn't define uh, the person or the the goal. So, mm-hmm. and just like what I was saying before, people fixate on the tools and the bright shiny objects. And yeah. there's a new there's a new widget and a new plugin and a new CMS and a new tool coming out every day. Yes, I, yeah, I can't exactly. keep, I can't keep up with them all. I don't have the time for it. I've got things to do. I've got a business to run. I've got a wife to take care of. Yep. So, you know, uh, so it's, you don't want to fixate and look at the, the tree. You want to look at the forest. Yeah. The objective is, and a lot of the people who I see online, let me give you this one example. I know of a, of a realtor. He's a million-dollar millionaire realtor 
online. He has a reality TV show. He seems like a very nice person. And I've seen some of his programs and everything. And anyway, I looked at his website the other day, just looking at design for inspiration. The design was actually quite basic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there weren't any rotating logos or flashing lights or any crazy stuff like that. There's no music playing or anything like that. It would look the same on your phone as it would on the on the PC or laptop. Mm-hmm. But you could it looked professional and sleek. But that was it. Yeah. The goal the goal was to communicate seriousness, professionalism, and this is what I do. This is how I do it. And then this is why you should work with me. These are my books. If you want to hire me to come speak for you, I will. Here's how to get in touch. That was the purpose of it. And it achieved that result masterfully. Amen. Amen. Well, and and we that's, are, my, that's my point. Amen. We are almost completely out of time. I hate this clock. It, it always seems to run fast when I'm doing an interview. But uh, if, if someone wanted to get more information about you and your company and all that, how can they do that? Very, very easy. Uh, just you can call me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And obviously, I'm not a vampire. I need to sleep. Uh, so if I'm on the phone with someone else or just not you know, on the phone at that time, leave a message. I'll get back to you. You can call me at 424-DAVID-01, 424-DAVID-01. And... You know, as long as it's, uh, you know, in, in a message that I can discern the name and <laughs> the phone number, <laughs> I'll get back to the person. A lot of times people will call and hang up right away or yeah. uh, I just, I just want to know how much is a website or something. I care. You know, I may call the person back, but I'm like, I, we need to have a conversation. I'm yeah, not, right. I'm, you know, I'm not flipping cheeseburgers. I need to be able to have an adult <laughs> conversation with you. Yeah. Um, give me your first and last name. Give me your phone number. Try to tell me something about yourself and what you do. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So 424-DAVID-01 is a great way to get in touch. Um, I have several business websites. Uh, Sudden Impact Web Design, mm-hmm. which is on online at siwd.co. Yep. And I have a division of that where I work specifically with lawyers and law firms because I have experience as a mediator and I can kind of get down and dirty with them, so to speak, um, with the technical specifications of their needs. That website is online at de facto digital.co. Um, So I hope I'm not bombarding anybody with too much information. Um, If there's one takeaway, it's just 424-DAVID-01. And that, you know, to demystify digital marketing, you know, it's about having goals and achieving objectives and letting yourself achieve these objectives and budgeting realistically for what you really, really want to achieve the most, which is more business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe if we talk again, I can talk more specifically about budgeting and just yeah. how that worked and break okay. that down. We'll I wish I had more time to get into it. Yeah, we'll have to line that up because I think this is something that a lot of our listeners, uh, that's our area, I guess, our, our niche, uh, that they would be interested in that. Uh, I'd love to talk to you again about just, okay. you know, because it's something everybody wants to know about. How do I budget? What yeah. should I budget? How do budgets work? And, you know, I've been a reporter. I've worked for agencies. I've, I've run agencies now. Um, and I've been a consultant for many, many, many different types of businesses. And I know how they how you budget for exposure and publicity and all the different types. Um, so I'd love to get into that and explain that to your audience. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you you brought that up, or I did. I don't brought it up real quick because uh, I just want to put the, all this in the footnotes or in the show notes. Uh, tell sure. us about some of your books. Um, you know, I have several ebooks on Amazon, and uh, honestly, I'm always adding to them and working on beefing them up. Okay. Um, so I have a book of poetry and short stories, and I'm working on – one of the things I like about ebooks is I can add more to it. I can just write the material, log in, and submit the new folder 
and it's changed, you know, within a few minutes. Yeah. So I have several books on Amazon about business um, that are very, very low cost. They're very short. Um, they're more of like entry points. So I've got one book I'm working on now for lawyers about marketing law firms and what they need to know. Um, and I'm going to be beefing up my current books more in the future. Okay. But, you know, I'd love to write one for the church, for, um, you know, the average church, you know, okay. Okay. Uh, like a case study for a church. There's just so many things. Um, but, you know, I'm happy to answer any and all questions uh, and, you know, and talk to people uh, who, who want to build what they're doing Amen. and, um, you know, take things to their natural uh, calling. Amen. Well, folks. Uh, we are all out of time. Uh, I want to encourage you to go and check out David's books. See if one of them interests you and purchase it. Purchase all five. Glory to God. I mean, you know, don't look at me with that tone of voice. I hear what you're thinking. Glory to God. We need, as a body, as the body of Christ, we need to support businesses and authors and, and those that have a Christian base, a Christian attitude in what they're doing. We need to support people like David Summerfleck and his wife and, and their team. We need to do what we can to help them out. And as David alluded to several times, you know, not break the bank in the process. Amen? I mean, these digital books are priced affordable, and this will go and, and help him to be able to do more stuff. And, and that book will give you the information where you can go and do more things as well. So it's a win-win on both ends. So go on Amazon, look up David Summerfleck, and find these books and see if one interests you and purchase it. Amen. And, 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 and if, I can, if I can add, mm -hmm. if anybody reads any of my e-books and they say, I still have questions. You didn't answer my specific question or my issue. All they have to do is they can call me. I'll get on the phone. I'll ask them for their email address. And I'm happy to answer any questions that they have related to any of this. So, you know, I feel bad because, you know, what I do have doesn't always answer every question yeah. for every person. Yeah, so right. I'm always... Uh, happy. Uh, if people want to email me, they can email me. Uh, my email address is extremely short, so it's deceptive. DMS. DMS, the letter D, the letter M, like Martin, and then S. So it's my initials, DMS at SIWD dot CO. All right. Any, anybody can email me, and I will respond within a day or two, usually. And I'm happy to answer serious questions um, and help people out. And, you know, that's something I truly, truly believe in, and I will seriously do it. Amen. So if you need help, there is, you know, I'm here to help you guys. I want you to grow. Okay. Amen. Well, folks, that is all the time we have for today. Uh, David, I thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. I know some things were going on and, and that you're so busy, but just taking the time to, to meet with us and, and go over this, I know it's going to be a blessing to somebody that is going to hear it at some point in time. Amen. Uh, so thank you again. And folks, again, go to uh, www.siwd.co, not com, but co, and check out David's website. For David Summerfleck and myself, this is Pastor Bob Tilber reminding you to be blessed in all that you do.